Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. I love going thrifting for different pieces. This is a teapot that was missing its lid. It was $2 at the thrift store. So what I'm going to do first is use some 100% acetone to clean it all up. That's going to get rid of all of the stains in this little spout. It's going to get all of the glue off from the sticker and it's just going to clean it up really nice and it dries really fast as well. Next, I'm going to give it a good coat of this Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Finish. This is a shiny teapot, and you can see here, now that it's been sprayed, it's nice and matte. And that's really going to help my paint stick to my project. I'm using a super soft brush. That's going to help eliminate any of the brush strokes. I'm also just going to use my own DIY chalk paint. And if you're interested in that recipe, it's down at the bottom of my description box. I ended up doing three coats for this teapot. While the teapot dries, it's time to work on what's going to go inside it. I'm just using a dry brush method with my burnt umber paint, and this is just a dowel that I found in my stash. I think this is a half inch dowel, so it's going to be nice and sturdy. I'm just going to continue to use my dry brushing until I get almost all of the dowel covered. I found this little foam box in my stash and that's the perfect size for me to just pop the dowel in. It's not really sturdy so I'm probably going to add a little bit of hot glue which of course is going to melt the styrofoam. So later on when I'm finished my project I'm going to add some of my weld bond glue to give it a permanent hold inside the box. I decided to build my own little Christmas tree using these pine picks that came from Amazon and I have the link down in my description box. I'm not sure if they're still available at this time. The other greenery that I'm going to use is just this fern that I bought a ton of in the springtime because I just thought it was so pretty. But I think it's also going to add a little bit of texture and dimension to this tree. So I'm going to start by taking these picks using the wire and wrapping it around the dowel and then using some hot glue to keep it in place. I'm going to do that for five of the picks on one layer and then I'm going to start adding the fern. It's really important to make sure that you tie it as tight as you can with the wire but then also with the hot glue don't do anything until it sets. I spent a lot of time just waiting for the hot glue to dry before I moved on to my next piece. I'm starting with the fern at the bottom and I'm leaving it on the stem, meaning that there's three little sprigs to one stem, but I've pulled it off the main stem. Now I'm just going to use hot glue and glue them onto the dowel rod a little bit and on top of the pine that's already there. That's going to make it nice and secure. Now I'm going to do another layer of the pine stems and then another layer of the fern and I'm just going to keep working my way up to the top of the tree. And as I get up to the top of the tree, I make my stems a little bit shorter. So I trim some of the pine and I trim some of the fern and just make sure that it has a beautiful Christmas tree shape. Again, using the same process with the wire and then hot glue. At this point, I'm about halfway up my dowel and you can see here that I just have my layers and I'm also just going to fill in any holes using some of the fern and using some of the pine pieces just to make sure that I don't have any holes. As I said earlier, when I got to the top of the tree, I started creating little shorter stems and that just meant cutting the ends off because the front part of the stem is always prettier than the back part. In regards to the pine picks, I did not use the wire at this point anymore. I just used hot glue and glued it right to the dowel. 
my tree is totally done. I just love how it turned out. And now I'm going to add some snow. So what I'm doing is taking one of the Dollar Tree stencil brushes and I'm dipping it into my chalk paint and I'm using a technique that I figured out on my own. I'm just pushing the paintbrush right into the stems and what happens is the tips of them get really nice and full with snow and then you can just work your way down the bottom of each of the stems. Now this is going to also take me a little bit of time so I'm going to speed up the process for you so you can see how it turns out. So this is the next day for my teapot. I wanted to make sure it was really nice and dry and I've got three coats on it. This is a printable that I created using Google Drawing. Of course, it will be available as a free printable on my website. If you're not familiar with how to get onto my website, there are some instructions down in my description box. What I'm gonna do is print this out on tissue paper and I'm going to do that two times. So what I'm doing now is just cutting it out. Sorry, you can't really see it, but I'm going to just trim off the edges now of the tissue paper and get it as close to my design as possible. I'm going to use Mod Podge to apply the tissue paper transfer and I'm going to give the teapot a good amount. I don't want it really thick, but I want all of the areas that is going to have the tissue paper nicely wet with the Mod Podge. But it's okay if you miss a little bit on the outsides. It's really easy to just lift up the tissue paper and put some more on top. I'm going to lay the tissue paper printable right on top of the Mod Podge, smoothing it out really gently with my fingers, as you can see me doing here. And then I'm going to take my brush that always is going to have a little bit of Mod Podge on it. It has to be wet, otherwise you're going to tear the tissue paper. And then I'm just going to put another layer of Mod Podge on top. If there's any wrinkles, I just use a technique that I figured out. I take my brush with a tiny little bit of Mod Podge on it and I pounce it up and down right on top of the wrinkle or the bubble and it just pushes it right into the surface of the paint. I'm going to push that tissue paper right over the edge and into the inside of the teapot and I'll also do the same thing at the bottom. Once I was done this and it was all dry, I did the same thing on the other side. I just used a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of the box of the Christmas tree and glued it in place. And I think this is gorgeous. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank all of my current subscribers. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I'm so close to 30,000 subscribers, which is my goal by the end of 2021. So if you're new to my channel and you like what you see, I'd love it if you could hit that red button too. This next project is an inspiration from some other channels. I've been seeing bottle brush trees on spindle pieces and I just couldn't resist. I had to do one for myself. So I've got two of these spindle pieces that I have in my stash. I'm going to give both of them a few coats of white chalk paint to start. Once they were completely dry, I took my sanding block and I started to distress all of the raised edges. I did a little bit of sanding in between as well, just to make it look like it was worn and weathered. This green snowy bottle brush tree is from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to leave the bottom wood piece on. It fits perfectly on this smaller spindle and I'm just using hot glue to attach them. The larger tree didn't have a bottom on it anymore, although I would have cut it off because it was like this mound of snow. And I'm just using a wheel here. I'm going to put some hot glue in the center of the bottle brush tree. I'm pulling down all of the branches and then I'm just going to go ahead and 
push that right on top of the metal pieces and glue it in place. This made it really easy to glue the tree onto the spindle and there was a little bit of course of the wood showing so I decided to use some red ribbon to cover that up. These are beautiful. I am in love. This last project is a true trash to treasure. I have these wooden boards that I picked up off the street in the summertime when a neighbor was redoing their deck. And I just cut them into the same length. I think this is probably about 14 inches. And then I'm going to use my drill and some screws to put them together and create a box for my Christmas tree. I like to start my screws first before I actually start putting things together. And I do struggle a little bit hanging on to things and drilling at the same time. So if you do as well, get somebody to help you. It's so much easier. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and put these all together. And then I'm going to give it one rough coat of white chalk paint. While I waited for the paint to dry, I went to my Cricut and I designed a decal, of course, which will be available on my website as a decal, but it will also be available as a free printable. Check out that down in my description box. I did make this a little too big, so if I had to do it again, I would probably shrink these words just a little wee bit, but I still think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. And here's how it looks with my Christmas tree. I hope you enjoyed these thrift store and trash to treasure decor ideas. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That also helps me get noticed on YouTube and helps my channel grow. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.